They called Panama hats, but they came from Ecuador. Where did they get this name from? And how Panama hats came from a small Indian village to a worldwide popularity. My name is Katya Malina, and I am creative director for Cat and Bonnet Luxury Panama hats and accessories. Many people don't know the story behind this gorgeous piece of art. So today we're gonna dive deep into the history of Panama hats. Before we continue, make sure to check out our website catandbanet.com. The link is below this video for the best Panama hats you can find handmade in Ecuador and designed in Miami. And also follow us on our Instagram, which is catandbanet. The hat woven art was originated on the South American coast in the early 1600s. In the 17th and 18th centuries, woven hats raised in popularity. Ultimately, the trade moved beyond its originating worth to make Panama hats an excellent choice for many people worldwide. While other countries make their own variation of straw hats, authentic Panama hats are made in Ecuador. Initially, South Americans called them toquilla hats. Panama hats from Monte Cristi are the most famous as that is the Ecuadorian town where the hats came from. The name Panama hat came much later during the first efforts of the global market expansion with the Panama Canal. During the mid-18th gold rush, many Americans went through Panama to get to California. Many of them found Panama hats during these travels and bought them while docked at the Panama Canal. And that's where the Panama hats came from. Later on, Theodore Roosevelt was photographed many times wearing a Panama hat while inspecting the Panama Canal. The iconic picture traveled the news making a new Panama hat, hyping among men and women. But why are Panama hats unique? The Panama hat is unique for numerous reasons. They may look like original straw hats at the distance, however, there are significant differences upon closer look. The Panama hat owns a laid-back sophistication and comfort for everyone wearing it. The hat is woven from a toquilla palm's young leaves, while this material is both solid and lightweight, with the beautiful natural color after being dried. The Panama hat is noted for keeping you cool in hot weather with its unique and distinctive wave. These features alone make it a popular and classical style for tropical climates. Many celebrities have acknowledged Panama hats throughout history. Some of them are Theodore Roosevelt, Gary Cooper and Gallo Plaza. How Panama hats are made? The straw from Panama hats comes from the tequila palm leaves. It grows along the coast of Ecuador. Harvesters begin the process with sharp blades to cut the leaf shoots. This is an art form by itself, as they have to choose the perfect time for harvesting. To keep the plants alive, they only cut the shoots they need. Therefore, there are no devastating effects on the forest, making Panama hats 100% eco-friendly. Once the palm has been harvested and packed, the next step is to open the shoots up uh, to reveal long grass-like strands. Just like a top of romaine lettuce, the outer shoots are more solid. They get peeled further to reveal lighter color, more tender parts of the shoots. They ultimately became the toquilla straw for Panama hats. Tough pieces get discharged and chosen strands get cooked in a boiling water. During this part, the process straw became pale yellow and a few hours later they hung to dry. The process enables each strand to dry quickly into a flexible straw. Some of this straw gets used as is, but most of them go through a bleaching process to produce colorless straw. They are used to make the legendary white Panama hat, like Jungla which I have on the picture right now for you from our last collection. Usually, it's an independent artisan who buys the harvested straw from the harvester. Seasoned waivers can simply pick the best pieces in the pack and discard any that don't meet their years of knowledgeable standards. 
Once they cut the straw evenly, the waver begin with the hand waving a small circular mat. The mat forms the center of the head. Gradually, he adds more and more pieces until the small mat becomes flat. Large plantilla that forms the top of the Panama hat. Once the plantilla is created, it gets transferred to a unique stand. The stand lets the waver keep the head base in place while adding woven sides to the crown. From there, he waves the brim out all the, along the head's circumference. While leaning over the weighted piece, the artisan works from the edge of the plantilla down to the end of the crown and then up to the edge of the head's brim. The weaving is done totally by hand and can take months, considering the head size and the weaver's skills. When the weaver is finished, there will be a spray of straw around the brim. Usually, a new expert takes care of the finishes, finishing the brim. To complete the brim, every piece of the straw gets carefully woven back towards the head. They use this technique to make a uniform edge that keeps the wave secure and gives the edge a polished look. Where can you get Panama hat? Many places sell them and they're claiming to be Panama hat. But be careful, since many sellers play with the name and they try to sell machine-made hats at the Panama hat style. Hats for a piece of the price. You should consider only handmade hats made in Ecuador with the natural fibers and materials from the Toquilla palm. That's why I suggest having your first Panama hat from catandbonnet.com. We will offer you only 100% original and eco-friendly Panama hats woven in Ecuador and designed by amazing designers in Miami. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you would like to get more information, don't forget to check catandbonnet.com for additional info.